Okay. So next speaker is Andrei Varlamov, and he will present a uh, work about topological phase transition between gap and gap superconducting state. Please, Andrei. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Now it's okay? Okay. Okay, so I would like to thank uh, the organizers for this very nice, traditional, and a little bit nostalgic conference. Uh, for me, I, I mean that after all this pandemic and other events, it is so nice to see the people whom I know uh, 40 years, 30 years. And uh, today I would like to speak about some I told about nostalgia, so I will speak about uh, the synthesis of two fundamental uh, uh, seminal papers published in 1960 in Soviet JET. So this paper was um, accomplished together with Yuri Yerin, who is present here, and with Katerina Petrilla, he, who presents in Trieste uh, in the quality of, I don't know, president of uh, technological park. So the outline uh, of my talk will be, uh, first reminder will be devoted to gapless superconductivity. The second reminder will be devoted to the transition of the second and half order. Then I will ask myself, what is the order of the gap gapless transition in, superconduct, uh, in superconductor? Then, I will propose you the topological interpretation of gap gapless transition. And uh, then I will try to put in doubts the mean field treatment of this transition by the father's foundation, uh, foundators of Abrikosov and Garkov. And naturally, I will find that they were right. The, the account for fluctuations actually shows that this approach is very stable with respect to uh, the non-homogeneity of distribution of um, paramagnetic impurities. And finally, I want to speak about the possible experimental detection, what consequences this uh, treatment uh, not just uh, uh, can have to experimental uh, study of this transition. And I will speak about the giant thermoelectric effect. So, Let's start from uh, year 1960, when uh, in 1959, uh, Abrikosov and Garkov developed the well-known for all of us um, cross diagram technique for account for impurities. And in 19, uh, so they did it for normal metal, and then they immediately applied it for superconducting alloys. Next year, they considered the spin flip um, uh, rescatterings and found very non-trivial thing. Uh, 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 after 46 years of uh, the question, what is superconductivity, Bardin, Cooper, and Schrieper proposed their uh, the outstanding theory where the superconductivity, the phenomenon of supercurrent was strongly, uh, directly related with the gap in the spectrum. So what was the consequence of the discovery of Abrikosov and Garikov that it is possible to have gapless superconductor and still a uh, gapless regime and still to have supercurrent. So this was a fundamental because we ex understood that gap and supercurrent are not necessarily the same. Uh, uh, so uh, still they left uh, in uh, the uh, long range order. In 1970, from the papers of Berezinsky, Taulis, Kostrins, we understood that even this 
is not necessarily for two dimensional system because you can have supercurrent even without long range order. So uh, it was the first uh, strong extension of BCS theory, I would say. So what they did, actually they wrote the standard BCS theory in Garkov formulation and took into account the spin flip scatterings. And they found, uh, 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 sorry, they found that critical temperature is, first of all, that exists some critical concentration of paramagnetic impurities, which kills superconductivity and C. But in the range between zero, between 91% of this critical to this critical, there is an interval of concentrations where the superconductor is gapless and still you have supercurrent. Okay, then they found how uh, paramagnetic impurities shift critical temperature, et cetera, et cetera. Very good. Now I will go. Uh, so now what does this mean for density of states? So in gap regime, naturally you have the smeared uh, BCS picture. Then in the critical in the point zero nine one two of critical concentration, you have the cusp. And then you have the um, some non-singular behavior of uh, uh, density of states. Now, let's go to Kharkov, uh, the city which is now uh, every day in the newspapers. Uh, Ilya Livshitz, yes? Is that the question about PS in the chat, which is irrelevant. What happens to the superfluid stiffness in this regime? Sorry? What happens to the superfluid stiffness? Superfluid? Superfluid yeah. remains. So it's finite. Okay. Yes, yes, it's finite. It's finite, yes. Uh, so it leaves it. So every day during this conference, we listen about Van Hoff singularity. Van Hoff singularity, what do we intend? We intend the singularity in the density of states. Of what? I want to recall you that the paper of Van Hoff in 1953 was written for phonon, for phonons. But of course, then we can uh, apply this also for electrons. So in 1960, uh, uh, Ilya Lipschitz uh, studied the free energy of the metal when the Fermi surface changed the number of its components of topology, topological connectivity. I mean the formation of new void or the break of the uh, hyperboloid, or, okay, the break of the neck in, uh, let's say, uh, let's suppose that I have the brilliant zone and I have uh, the thermosphere. I add uh, electrons. At some moment, thermosurface grows to touch the um, uh, um, uh, the um, uh, uh, border of uh, brilliant zone, and from the closed Fermi surface, you pass to open one due to periodicity. This is, a, uh, if you do vice versa, it will be the break of the neck. So, uh, Leeuwis had studied thermodynamical potential close to it and found that such changes uh, results in appearance in thermodynamic potential of the power Z in power five over two, where Z is a parameter which governs transition. And this is epsilon or mu minus mu critical, where mu critical is the value of chemical potential this critical point. Very good. Uh, I want to recall you that in 1933, Erin first introduced classification of the phase transition and he identified the order of phase transition with the order of derivative which um, uh, passes the uh, break singularity. So first order phase transition, the entropy breaks. Second order transition, heat capacity breaks. Third order transition, fourth order transition. So he told that all this is possible. So in terms of air and phase classification, the Lifshitz called this transition and the two and a half order phase transition. Why? 
because appearance of z in power five over two means that after three derivations, you will get one over square root of z. And uh, he called this two and a half phase transition. The density of states, ex exactly like in the case of Honnold's in Van Hoff scenario, uh, um, uh, undergoes the cusp square uh, in the three dimensional case. Okay, then uh, consequences. Indeed, the paper was published in 1960. And then he spoke only about thermodynamics. And actually nothing happened. So people tried to apply to, to superconductivity those times and they did not find something dramatic. Dramatic happened, a dramatic event happened in 1981 where uh, Valery Yegorov with uh, Fyodorov, they studied the thermoelectric effect in uh, the alloy lithium X magnesium one minus six. And they found that close to uh, the point X equals 0 0.19, they found, you see, this is the behavior of thermoelectric effect as a function, this curve is for room temperature, something happens at nitrogen and you see evident peak at the helium temperatures. So it was necessary to explain. And uh, uh, I want to recall you the, what is the difference between uh, the Z coefficient and conductivity. So in conductivity, just from um, Boltzmann equation, you immediately have drew the formula with the derivative of Fermi function integrated. But if you will do the same with for thermoelectric coefficient, you will have a beautiful zero. Why? Because of the oddness and evenness of the expression. So to get non-zero answer, you need to take into account electron hole or something else. The uh, 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 so next terms in V nu, V nu and tau. So the fact that we observe the giant thermoelectric effect should be attributed to some changes in this. The most simple, what was done by Wax, to say, look guys, nu has a cusp. Mod formula says me that beta thermoelectric coefficient is a d log sigma over d mu. So I will have derivative of nu and in denominator. So this is the origin of giant effect. This is wrong. This is wrong because where from you take this uh, square root from small void, what is the Fermi velocity there? Zero. So V square kills you. So this explanation does not work. And to get true explanation, it is necessary. So we did it many times years ago. We just considered the microscopic theory of transport for uh, topological transition. So the model was taken as the mm, uh, hyperboloid of rotation. And we wrote with Andrei Pansulaya, we wrote the green function uh, at uh, such spectrum with one negative mass and solved the problem for mm, uh, uh, solve the problem for uh, self energy, uh, self consistent equation. And what is important, you see here that there are different scattering processes. It is possible to consider electron scattering from the periphery of uh, Fermi surface to the periphery, but there are processes from periphery to the small, uh, to the um, neck in this case. And namely, these processes where the neck appears as a trap for electrons gives you the main contribution in scattering time. And the, uh, what happens? Sorry. No, no, sorry. Mm -hmm. Aha, yes, okay. It is possible to do, it is interesting that you can consider another model, not uh, one band uh, model with hyperboloid of rotation, but you can consider the uh, formation of new, uh, no, I started. 
oh my god okay so i will finish with this <laughs> okay in any case it is possible to explain that so conclusion electronic topological transition is strongly related to so it can be determined by the giant thermoelectric effect okay now let's go uh, uh, i will ask my question what is the order of the gap gapless transition in superconductor you can open the parts book or um, uh, the ambiguous car and Griffin paper of 65 and find the expression for free energy at zero temperature quantum phase transition. Please derive it three times and you will see that in third derivative you have the exactly like in Lipschitz transition square root. So uh, then you can get this curve which I already tell you. But the question is that superconductor is not normal metal. Where in Lifshitz's approach, all was clear in the interpretation of the appearance of new voids, the change of the number of the components of connectivity. Here, it was necessary to propose some topological treatment. And uh, yeah, so we propose to find what happens from the point of view of topology in this quantum phase transition, we propose to study density of states, not in two dimensional space, but in three dimensional space. We study the corresponding surfaces as a, n density of states as a function of energy naturally, and as a function of the independent parameter. So delta in the state without impurities. And you see the, in, uh, the uh, difference between these curves is a, a because of Gerkov parameter one over tau s delta. And you see how it changes the shape of these curves. You see that something happens in the point zeta equal one. To understand this, we should return to platonic solids. And uh, to, to recall you that exists the Euler Poincare characteristic of it, which is. Uh, the uh, sum and difference of mm, number of vertices, edges, and faces. For each platonic solid, uh, of which Kepler wanted to construct all the universe, uh, uh, the he is equal to. But it, for more complicated uh, polygons, it can be not two. So we propose to characterize Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if there are two possibilities, one possibility is formal. We have density of states. We can calculate the curvature, curvature or the corresponding, and calculate uh, in the, uh, according to Euler Bonnet theorem, which relates the uh, uh, Euler uh, number with integral of uh, curvature. We can calculate directly. Or more simple we can uh, construct the polygons on these curves and just calculate uh, Euler upon characteristics. The answer will be the same. What is important is that for gap state, k is zero. In the point of transition, it changed to one. Now, I want to do in a, a last minute I want to do the reverse consideration. So I started from Lifshitz and then I uh, applied it uh, to uh, superconductor. I found new treatment because Fermi surface did not mean too much. And now I want to say that if Lifshitz would speak not about the change of number of components of connectivity, but would speak about the Euler Poincare characteristics, what he would get. You see, now I make the parallel between superconductor and between the two types of Lipschitz transition. And I see that in figure D, the two sheet hyperboloid, where each sheet is topologically equivalent to disk with he equal one. So the Euler characteristic of the disjoint union of two disks will be two. 
In figure E, it will be one. In figure F, it will be zero. And I can do the same for the void formation. And I see again that the Euler characteristics change from four to two. So now in one slide, I'm finishing. In one slide, I can demonstrate you that, why, what is happening? I don't understand. Uh, yes, in one slide, I can demonstrate you that because of Garkov mean field theory is very stable. So I take the free energy from homogeneous superconductor and add kinetic term. I rewrite in Ginzburg Landau, I rewrite this kinetic term as a uh, derivative of Z parameter over density uh, of the concentration of the impurities. And I see that actually for validity of mean field, it is enough that logarithm on concentration slowly changed on the Xi. And final slide that if I will repeat uh, the calculus of uh, thermoelectric effect in superconductor, uh, so for uh, the uh, quantization of flux, so I will see that effect is giant. Thank you very much, I finished. Thank you very much, Andre. So there are questions or comments here from the audience. Yeah. Just to clarify, so you say that this global curvature of electric characteristics, whatever you call it, enters into some physical effect. So what is the physical observable that is determined or expressed in terms of this topological number? Uh, we found only that, uh, uh, actually it was already known that, uh, so what uh, you have, the, uh, uh, so what is thermoelectricity in superconductor? We know that there is no effect in bulk superconductor, but you can construct the ring of two superconductors of different superconductors and put at different temperatures. So instead of uh, the uh, um, quantization of flux, integer quantization of flux, you will have some non-integer contribution, which is a demonstration of the thermoelectric effect, which depends on thermoelectric coefficients of one and other superconductors in normal state. Here, the effect will be giant, and we can predict how it will uh, depend on temperature and impurity concentration. Yeah. Yes. So, Andre, um, you emphasize the narrow region in concentration when this gapless state, but in the thermoelectric coefficients, the width of your parameter zeta is much larger. So, it does seem that yes. the anomaly starts way yes. before. So, what really controls uh, the width in the observable versus the width of the. Uh, oh, a very good question. Yes. So, I want again to. So, this calculus was done absolutely following the ambiguous car griffin theory. Uh, the uh, giant effect, uh, so I want to say, uh, first of all, you're right, that it is extended up to half of the, uh, the second, that maximum as usually for topology, uh, as in the case of Lipschitz, is asymmetric and is um, uh, belongs to the or, um, uh, range of gap superconductor. So it, it, its effect is epsilon Fermi divided temperature. So the uh, the parameter of the uh, w w in comparison with uh, the background. So it must be. Uh, it it should not be uh, um, uh, small. I mean it, its range is large, of course, the same in the normal metal. So, so maybe the confusion is that the range in density where you see the gap less a superconduct, the concentration where you see the gaps in a superconductor is very small. Yes. This is what you showed at the beginning, but the Xi here has nothing to do with that. No, no, this is zeta. The, the, uh, uh, it changes from one to zero, but zeta is one over, so transition happens in the point of one. Yeah. But this is not concentration. Zeta is one over tau s delta. So uh, all range from zero to one, it corresponds to
to uh, it corresponds in your uh, in ns all above above 0 0.091. So this is just the range between yes. 0 and 1 is between 0 0.91 and 1. Yeah, yeah. So this is gap stage, uh, state, mm -hmm. and this is gapless. So it is large from 1 to infinity. Okay, so I don't see other questions. So we thank again, Andre. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry for starting the other.